We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on Anthony Weaver, Miami Dolphins' newest defensive coordinator. We're going to look over some Texans film back in 2020 when he was the defensive coordinator for that team and then go through some Ravens stuff from this past season where he was the defensive line coach, uh, what he can possibly take from McDonald, who's one of the best defensive minds in the NFL right now, how he can evolve and merge those together. I'm a fan of this move. Uh, I'm going to let some clips just play in the background going over it. And when he was with the Texans, it was a lot of single high stuff, cover one, cover three, especially on early downs. He clearly puts an emphasis on stopping the run with extra guys in the bo box earlier, make offenses one-dimensional. And then with the passing game, I think, you know, he had some, like, basic looks on the back end while he was with Houston. I would like to see him take some things from the Ravens, as we'll get to those stuff later on. But he does do a good job with his blitzes, with his stunts up front, well-timed things, disguising things, um, making things, like, uh, difficult. He was also just a great positional coach with his defensive linemen. Uh, with Baltimore, he had, you know, Matabuke, and then other guys just really step up. All throughout his career, he's done that. He was their run game coordinator for the Ravens, their run game defensive coordinator back in 2021, and they were, like, the top... Uh, team versus the run in that that year so a lot of things to like and just hearing him talk because you never know for sure how everyone's going to work out 100 percent. but hearing him talk about things it's very interesting you could tell he's definitely uh, intelligent he uh, has a nice plan and he's a former player i think he's like 46 years old so it's still pretty young i like going for that younger approach just with this team it makes sense and i think uh he clearly gets along well with his players looking at the team he's going to do a great job i think with the defensive front getting them going on the back end, lots of cover one, cover three. So getting the team in man-to-man, -man, I think we'll see, you know, players are definitely experienced with that. I think they'll go more with the Ravens approach, which I really want to see because they do an amazing yeah. job uh, with their play calling there too. But yeah, stopping the run on early downs, uh, disguise blitz. He takes a lot of inspiration from Rex Ryan. He said that like many years ago. And then, you know, combining that with the Ravens approach, I think could be very interesting. And he just seems to have like a good head on his shoulders and fit the culture well with this team i think getting linebackers will be very very important uh with how effective this defense could be because the only year he got to play like defense coordinator call plays was for the texans in 2020 and they did not have a lot of talent so it is kind of hard to judge it uh purposely but now let's just get right into some of these plays break down exactly what he likes to do this is a third and two situation uh looking at this across the board the uh, the texans end up going cover one i uh, playing lots of man-to-man, -man, which could be helpful for the team. Like, let's the guys press. I think versatility is super important. We'll really get over that when we get to the Ravens film. Like, having a Ramsey and Holland, I think, because they were always playing just the exact same spots in their defense with R Ramsey and Holland. Move them around a lot and play multiple different spots. I think that will be key to some of the defense success because they have the versatility to do it. So allowing them to use that, I think, uh, puts a, the defense in a very, uh, or the offense in a very difficult position. But I like his disguise here. Getting the cover one, he ends up just throwing up the fade. He's showing a bunch of pressure here pre-snap, but only even ends up bringing three, dropping like even some defensive lineman, linebacker underneath to take away some of these quick passes because it's a third and two. And then it sort of just forces like a low percentage throw out to the boundary. That's actually a, was Keon Crossan who's been on the Dolphins, but with making that play right there. But I just love the different looks he uses. He likes to run a lot of like 4-3 under, 4-3 over. I saw both throughout this. I think after cover one and cover three, the next highest coverage I saw was cover two. Rarely ran cover two man uh, within. And then when he got to like pretty obvious passing situations, he would mix in like some quarters, cover six looks. But he didn't run it a whole ton. I think you might see more of that with the Dolphins, but it wasn't something that he was uh, doing very, very often. Definitely had some of that uh, Rex Ryan thing going on for him. But just want to show this, just to show the different looks he might get, end up giving pre-snap, who ends up dropping into coverage, having an edge drop here, and then working some stunts underneath only bring three guys, but he will uh, give definitely different looks uh, while dropping people, but then also bringing some blitzes too. Definitely uh, some good disguises there. And hopefully coming from the Baltimore stuff, because the Baltimore Ravens scheme is absolutely beautiful to watch, as you'll see. This is another similar situation later in this game. It's a third and three this time. They end up going cover one again, allowing just people to press, which I think is important. The Dolphins very rarely pressed. I liked to, he has an aggressive style defense. He likes to allow his players to play aggressive. He does some things up front. This time, he ends up bringing multiple people and just really want to focus. I end up thinking they end up calling defensive pass interference here. But just look at all the different looks he'll end up giving people moving across, uh, back and forth, pre-snap, all of these defenders, whether they're linebackers, defensive tackles, defensive ends, multiple different spots. 
Um, they all end up coming here. 54 really sells it by getting into the right guard and then dropping out late to take away a possible throwing lane to there. Just a lot of interesting different looks to see up front. I think that's where he's got some good versatility with the multiple looks. He definitely, you know, is a defensive lineman and he puts those guys in very advantageous positions and uh, makes things difficult for an offensive line to pick things up. Just another example in third and five, just that's what I'm doing through that this Bengals game is a lot of bringing those pressures into cover one, dropping people out, uh, and then other people coming in on blitzes. It just forces the quick decision on these, you know, tougher downs because it looks like this guy might end up being the one that blitz, but it ends up being 41 that comes from this side. And then they run a stunt behind it, so it puts 25 in a tough position. This guy has to go uh, here. This They're sliding to the left, so this left guard ends up giving this a one-on-one -on -one because he thought this linebacker would come, and he drops into coverage, takes away an initial throwing away to this side, and it just forces the ball to come out super quickly, and they end up making a nice pass deflection at the catch point. But just want to show this. There will definitely be a ton of different blitz varieties, especially on like short to medium down and dis distances on like third down situations. This is a nice little run blitz here from the Texans. They get an extra guy in the the box. They uh, always end up doing a lot of single high. This is like a, a cover three look. They get to this guy blitzing off the edge, running a nice little run blitz. It just ends up you know, holding this to no gain uh, with the timing of this stuff. He has people sort of creep up pre-snap. Uh, everyone set up, you know, with the one, they got the one tech here, a guy with in like a five position. Uh, three to four i they they'll run variations of four three over four three under things like that you know this time they had three down linemen standing up edge here uh and then just creep one of the dbs down near the line of scrimmage it gets him unblocked especially with his movement where uh 14 not able to down block him and then you have jj watt slant to the inside which ends up him taking on two bodies so he just does a good job of scheming guys up free whether it's first uh, run or pass just want to you know show this type of stuff it's probably where I became most impressed with his defense. This is one of the times where they drop into cover two actually on first down and uh, they get back to too high right before the snap and they actually drop one of the defensive linemen into coverage just to you know throw off the timing of things it ends up you know being like a four yard completion down to the flat uh, with cover two. He actually likes to do, do this. I saw this multiple times in the few games I watched from 2020. Uh, just this guy setting this up and then have them get hands on. He has a way to stop crossers. Whether he's in, he does this in, I've seen him do it in man to man, seen him do it in zone, drop, and they get your hands on one of these guys crossing underneath. Knows that these teams like to run crossers and then pass it off. Uh, everyone distributes on the back end pretty well. And then some guy comes up open late because uh, there was a lot of time. But just nice to see him be able to drop multiple more people into coverage. Only bring three this time. And then, you know, just make the quarterback hold on to the ball, force a late decision because. Those things can always go in a different way. This pre-snap looks like it's going to be like a cover three, but ends up rotating to like something different, almost like a variation of like quarters, but like a little, little bit of zero in it. Like the the deep safety comes down and then they match up underneath where this guy's like basically robbing. This safety goes man to man here. Uh, they pass this off. Just watch this. Like this guy looks like he's going to be man to man here, but then he passes it off to this linebacker. He finds this guy working across. He becomes basically the robber. Everyone else is matched up here. They bring four underneath. It just does a good job of disguising pre snap. Those are some very interesting disguised coverages there. It's not something I saw a ton on the Houston film, but I think you see it even more in Baltimore. So hopefully, you know, taking some of those uh, rules that he learned from there, and then they just get the pressure and then force the sack with the look on the back end being pretty unique. One thing I did notice was he did get the weak side linebacker, the will in a lot of situations, untouched, um, just getting to the running back. So I think, you know, having some decent linebacker play, I know people think Patrick Queen might fall him, which would be an interesting signing for sure. And then like there's Matabuke as a free agent who's an absolute beast at defensive tackle. If they didn't send Wilkins, it's an option. Uh, doing this stuff, this is a fourth, uh, like a more of a overlook right here with the three tech to the strength and the one tech to the weak side. And just based on this alignment, it just gets your will unblocked here because they have to work this combo here. This center is not going to climb back to this level, especially because it's more of like a split zone where it comes to the cutback. And it just leaves your linebacker unblocked to make a play, which I think is very nice to be able to do that without like straight up two gapping more guys like being able to be aggressive and get upfield is a very, very a good look for the running game. I do like some of the pre-snap shifts here, like uh, people rolling down instantly, like right before the snap. It's all about the timing of things like right here. Right before the snap's about to happen, this safety shoots down. 
this corner works back get clearly into your cover three get hands on here he's a seam flat defender squeeze that but know that you have this to leverage uh, down low like to see more of that stuff cover three they work some they run some zone match concepts from what i saw under weaver in 2020 obviously things could be different by the time he comes to the dolphins he's probably evolved and changed his stuff up and then just working underneath like uh some of the other stuff looking like you know 59 is going to come off the edge he drops it ends up bringing 41 zach cunningham an off ball linebacker on a blitz just give multiple different looks force the ball out and then like uh, what i saw there in coverage on that play this specific play texans look like they might be running some two-man here just with their pre-snap look at the bottom and they do a good job of selling it with their corners like but this is just uh, straight up cover two it doesn't end up being two man these guys align like they're playing man to man but it ends up being a zone now get your eyes to the quarterback here he's still able to squeeze underneath to this he thinks he might get it open once he thinks oh it actually is cover two this guy because he's reading this defender sees that he's uh reading with his eyes so try to get the ball out quick down to 13 but they're clearly playing cover two to both sides of the field it's nice to see some true zone but with some disguise to it as well uh just the coverage versatility is a little different like i think you're going to see players moved around a lot more, which I think is good. Have some freedom with your best players. doesn't have to be like absolutely to the rule. Like things are done with discipline still, but you're allowed to give your players a little more versatility, which I think playing some positionless football is very important at this, this day and age of the NFL level. They did a lot of interesting stuff with Baltimore aligning things pre-snap post-snap things changing up bringing pressure not bringing it's just so versatile with what they were able to do and just force the qbs to make quicker decisions than they wanted to with the eyes things like that like late rotation with their snaps their shifts and their zones uh very very versatile like they moved hamilton and humphrey around a lot this time they're able to bring five get this unblocked underneath obviously weaver's not calling plays but he was in this system uh, he did a really good job with this defensive line up front. They were getting so many pressure, so many plays. Here is just, you know, unselfish football from Clowney working across. He just gets eyes of the offensive lineman here, gets your linebacker untouched. Have to throw it down quickly into the flat to McCaffrey. Only pick up like a couple yards here. Showing that this could be a two high look pre-snap. Nope. Ends up rotating into a single high look. Running some like three match on the back end. Cover one cover three those tips different types of look read with your quarterback having athletic linebackers will be super super important force the ball underneath you have corners that are able to squeeze they clearly felt comfortable within this system uh little separation allowed and i like playing more man-to-man -man throughout the games i feel like uh sometimes the dolphins go a little bit soft last year and they gave up some big plays in those scenarios the ravens also made kyle hamilton like one of the best players in all of football last season ravens playing cover six to this side of the field he's just reading eyes doesn't get threatened from here so now he's getting back finding that they know that they like to look that middle of the field they do a, such a like mcdonald was like the shanahan tree eraser they went seven to go seven and zero against teams in the shanahan tree dolphins being one of them so like to see weaver carry over some of these concepts because there's a lot of a lot of things to like with this defense one of the things the ravens like to do last season was bring some db pressures too they'll bring you on the nickel safety blitz here just the corner coming off the edge they try to throw behind and just plays happen they like to get aggressive they're they're an attack the offense type of team they you know too high on the back end here they try to you know it's a it's an rpo here that's a run pass option but once purdy sees this guy blitzing he's just gonna throw this down to debo but then you know your corner gets hands up makes a play happen and when you're aggressive like this like you know worst case scenario really it gets caught by debo your safety makes a tackle they pick up you know eight nine ten yards but best case scenario you get a pick like this a big time turnover you get a sack I uh, just love the aggressiveness that that Ravens defense played with. So looking it over, very, very fun to watch the Baltimore Ravens defense. Then we know we looked at the Texans stuff because that's where Weaver was the defensive coordinator last time. He's going to have a lot more talent on the Dolphins defense, a lot of pieces to work with. I think even players like like Kohu really regressed this past season under Fangio, but going more to like man-to-man -man style stuff where he had a good race, rookie season, we can see him playing better, allow Ramsey and Holland to play with a lot more versatility, which I think is a key to their games. Not, you know... Uh, I think Cam Smith has some experience playing in a similar type of system in college, so that will be something that could be interesting to see if he steps up in the defensive back world. I think they'll add linebackers. We'll see. I think, you know, the whole defensive line, no matter who it ends up being, he's going to get the best out of those guys. So if you guys are the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.